I warned you the weekend before the presidential uh, election and the uh, Fed meeting that we would likely see a rally. And then I warned you again on Monday and Tuesday, bullish diversions had formed on the 60 minute chart. Likely go back and uh, rally towards those trend lines that broke and even see a new high because, again, we haven't reached my target level. We're still directly under it, uh, the high end of my target level in that uh, low to mid 6,000 area. We might even overthrow it and go into the 6,100s uh, there in the monthly time frame. But we have uh, uh, sell off. I told you we would get ahead of the rally presidential election and the fed that we would get a rally we've now become overbought and i told you i i've been predicting we pull back and then go up and hit my target level make another new all-time high we are pulling back as i said at the rally as i said i think we're still going to make another new all-time high on the s p 500 to complete a diversions on the 60 minute chart and see that happen uh, this week with the cpi data or the ppi data with powell speaking later in the week on thursday the market session. The Dow was down 0.86 percent, down 382 points, dropping back below 44,000. The S&P dropped back below 6,000, retreating and dropping 0.29 percent, dropping 17.36 per, uh, points. Nasdaq down 0.09 percent, uh, also down 1.77 percent. The VIX was also down 1.74 percent, back below 15 to 14.71. Tomorrow, before the market opens, we will get the CPI data. Again, the CPI data is expected to come in uh, on a month over month basis. Uh, the headline number at two tenths of a percent uh, on the uh, core at three tenths of a percent on a month over month basis. On a, uh, a year over year basis, the headline number is supposed to come in higher 2.6 versus 2.4. And then we're going to get the core year over year, which is supposed to stay uh, steady at 3.3, which again, watching, do we sell off further with this to form the diversions and the rally with something later? Or does this give us the rebound back up? We'll be watching closely, but I do think the S&P uh, will go back above 6,000 and reach my uh, objective target level. And again, that could be this week or next week with the NVIDIA earnings likely going to do it very very soon here the month of november but i am again continuing to predict that the s p will get a new all-time high and warning you about this 6,000 area for a long time my target's been between 5750 and 6,000. i've talked about the trend lines in the monthly time frame we're going to get the uh, uh wholesale inflation on thursday uh and the uh the nvidia earnings by the way are next week i think on the 20th uh we'll also get uh fed chairs Powell speaking during the session on Thursday, so we'll be watching that. So you've got the inflation data and you got Powell we'll be watching if if one of these events gives us a rally up to or if we sell off with the CPI and rally with Powell or and the PPI or sell off with the inflation data, rally, rally with the inflation data to my target level and then sell off with Powell. We'll see which way it plays out. But the uh, diversions I've been talking about. Uh, I told you I expected a sell-off today. Expected diversions is developing, and uh, I'll show the chart to you. I'm uh, uh, developing there on the 60-minute chart. So uh, Powell on Thursday and the inflation data for the next two days. We had the 10-year yield jump back above the broken trend line right here and um, got back above it, turned right back below it, and now we're jumping back up above it again. Again, this declining trend line, we keep hitting it. Uh, here and we're coming back up towards it right now so again going to be watching do we start seeing the yields drop reversing surrounding these two trend lines a couple of weeks ago elevated yields were rattling the market a little bit we'll see if that happens again Powell speaking thursday but again just something worth paying attention to here please support the channel with the link directly below that allows me to be able to provide you this information you can take a moment to do that i would really really appreciate that if any sponsors just a direct relationship with you made on YouTube is mostly through sponsorship. Follow the link below to take you to a secured site. You could donate any amount you want or make it a recurring donation. But if you would take a moment to do that, I would really, really be grateful. Thank you. VIX had that gap lower with the uh, presidential uh, election rally that we had. 
down to the 200. The 50 is still above the 200. Again, this is very problematic. We're likely in a topping process as long as the 50 holds above the 200 period moving average. But I told you again, a rally up to the thousand area, the monthly trend line, we could drop back below the 50 and move back here. That's now happened. Eventually we'll fill this gap. The bands are tightening, saying something is getting ready to happen. When they tightened over here, again, we had the big surge uh, in volatility and we saw the July sell-off. It dropped about 16% at that time, S&P just under 10%. Uh, and then uh, that followed, it followed that uh, we got the 50 above the 200. So again, I'll be watching to see if the 50 stays above the 200. It does what happens when we reach the monthly trend line on the S&P 500. It bounced off the 50, as I talked about, uh, the rally. VIX dropped below the 50 with the rally. Now again, just quickly, again, the 50 and the 200 crossovers. I've, the VIX uh, is not shown here. Just want to show you, again, the crossovers. And again, when you have these push crossovers of the 50 and the 200, here's the bear market over here. Uh, we have... Our recent history, again, major corrections. This is uh, 20, uh, the 2022 sell-off. This is uh, the uh, pandemic sell-off, 2018. And again, here we are. The 50 is above the 200. That's warning that something is about to happen. We're likely going to hit that trend line in the monthly time frame first, going deeper into the 6,000 area the mid 6,000 area, or maybe even overthrowing it and moving up into the 6,100 range. But I'm looking for a top in that area. This is suggesting we're going to get a major correction. We've had each time in the bull market when that has happened, that we're going to have a the beginning of a bear market like what we had over here, 2007. And again, you got the bullish cross remained that way in 2007 throughout the topping process so this is a huge red flag as we approach the trend line in the monthly time frame. A quick review of what happened uh, today. We initially tried to rally holding above the 200, got a lower high, lower than these highs are right here, ended up selling off. Remember I told you I was expecting a sell off to form the divergences on the S&P 60 minute chart, possibly NASDAQ. We sold off below the 200 period, the black line rallied back up to it, got rejection at it, and then turned down. And here we are at the 50, the 50 crossed below it. So again, if we're going to rally with the CPI, we got to get back above the 200, challenge these highs, I can take them out and go make a new all-time high. If we have more selling to do, then we'll take out this low and we'll remain below that 200 period moving average. The 50 will remain below it. So we'll be watching. Uh, if we can rally with the CPI or if we need to get more selling do then what do we what do we have retail sales on Friday I believe how on Thursday we get the PPI wholesale inflation on Thursday this week we got Nvidia so again I'm looking for that divergence on the 60 minute chart we're getting rejection at the 200 and the five minute chart breaking below it rallying to it that took us on the 15 minute chart below the 50 and back up to get rejection at it so again do we just keep going down you know and get a bigger sell off towards the 200 here on the 15 minute chart or do we try to get the rally right here and right now we have to see a diversions begin to develop first and we uh negative reaction to the cpi we'll be watching if we begin to see inflation data tick back up then the market could go oh we're going to get fewer cuts how that kind of works but things for the market to digest the inflation data and uh powell speaking later in the week in a moment you'll see the diversions as i'm looking for on those 60 minute charts see if they form immediately if this is all she wrote with the sell-off or if it gets bigger but i do think we'll still reach new all-time highs eventually immediately if the selling's done or uh after selling concludes i do think the s p will get one more push higher in a black candlestick yesterday there's more selling still have those resistance levels in the weekly and the monthly time frame which you'll see in this video i did expect a sell-off Tuesday. we'll see if it's done or not once it is done, I do expect a rally towards that monthly trend line. Look, back over here, I told you we we're forming a bullish divergence ahead of the presidential election and the Fed meeting. I told you to expect a rally to go back up and test the broken trend lines. We'll probably move to new high. Why do I say that? I keep saying we're going to move to new all-time highs because trend line, the upper end of the target level in the monthly time frame is above 6,000. 
likely going to reach that level. We're just under it now, but that's why I told you we are likely going to get a rally here. Formed the triangle with this correction, but it broke to the downside. It was a fake out, and then we bounced off of uh, the 50 period moving average in the daily time frame, forming this diversions. I warned you previous weekend, last Monday and Tuesday, that we we're going to get a rally out of the presidential election and the Fed. That has happened. Came very overbought. And then I told you, we, we got above 6,000. We're still likely going to reach the trend line. We're just under the trend line in the monthly time frame. And I told you we are likely pull back. That's happening. I drew this out three sessions ago, and it's now playing out. We're seeing this uh, turn down here. Told you we get a pullback, likely to form a divergence. Maybe we get more selling with the CPI and then turn back up, or maybe it's done now. Uh, you now get the rally with the CPI. We could sell off at the CPI and rally with uh, power or the PPI data. CPI comes in hot. It may uh, not be done with the sell off here, but again, going to be looking for this divergence. Again, S&P is likely going to make another new all time high when this pullback is done, whether that's today's low or we go a little bit lower, likely going to go a little bit higher. I think that the topping process could finish surrounding the tagging of that trend line in the monthly time frame and the trend line on the weekly chart that I've been talking about. I think we'll complete the diversions here. So again, the rally that I predicted has happened. The sell off that I predicted is happening. Maybe it's done rally with the CPI. If, it, if we don't, then it's not done and we can get a bigger sell off. We'll be watching the gap fill down here. We'll be watching gap support directly below. You have a gap support. Let me just draw the line here so you can see a gap support right here. Uh, and then the gap fill down here. So we'll be watching that our 50 period moving average at the uh, presidential results gap right here. We'll be watching that. I think that you're going to form a divergence, maybe uh Maybe it completes this week or next week with NVIDIA, but I think you're going to get it uh, completed ahead of NVIDIA earnings. We reach major resistance, we could end up seeing a sell-off with the NVIDIA earnings, which again, I think is likely forming a double top pattern. The divergence that I warned you to be watching for is setting up. Uh, we'll see if the selling is done yet or not. Whenever it is done, I do expect a new all-time high on the S&P 500, but the bullish divergence here on the 60 minute chart uh, tipped us off to the rally before it happened which is what i was warning you about i warned you about the 50 period moving average and horizontal support here from the uh, uh july peak right here that again we were likely going to bounce off these levels and back test um, these trend lines if this one if we got uh, if we uh, took our time getting to it move to a new high uh if we got above it which we did and go to the first broken trend line again one includes a shadow one excludes it that we can go back and back test this trend line well we've even overthrown that and i told you again if we go back to this other trend line uh we'll go to a new high immediately this one uh if we back tested it taken our time again we've come up to the upper boundary here but we're likely still going to overthrow this level now again a larger rising wedge developing on the weekly chart uh, I think you're going to see this diversions complete here on the MACD. If we sell off at the CPI, again, we might start forming a diversions in this most recent price action right here. I have had uh, divergences form at uh, these peaks. And again, why we sold off by uh, nearly 10% in at the uh, August peak. Again, sold off, rallied back up with the inflation data. Told you that would happen the foot the uh, post fed uh, pivot rally right here was a fed meeting i told you we we're going to go to move, move to new all-time highs we moved to a new all-time high right here we corrected sideways getting the triangle we broke out of the triangle the upward resolution formed another diversions i told you there was no evidence that that was the top but another triangle another triangle that had a downward resolution coming back to the support levels and i told you we are going to we formed a bullish diversions on the 60 minute chart we're going to bounce just to review again i keep saying we're going to move to new all-time highs and we're still likely not done we're still going to go to new all-time highs we have not reached my upper end of my target level yet we're going to reverse near the lower end of the target then we would have uh had this diversions take out support and start a reversal we bounced off support and i talked about this at great length of detail also the uh, breakdown of this trend line, we got confirmation, 
but no follow through. And then on the red trend line that broke, we broke the trend line. There was no confirmation, no follow through. So again, there was no confirmed reversal as I've talked about at great length and detail. To review, and if we get a bigger pullback, you might form a divergence RSI here. I do think one is forming, a triple divergence is forming there uh, on that 60 minute chart. I think the one here on the MACD will complete in the not too distant future. The S&P is just below this trend line right here in the monthly time frame. It's likely going to reach it. It might even overthrow it. If it does overthrow it, it can move into the 6,100 range. And right here, it is on the mid 6,000 area, slightly below it. So again, this is what I'm watching. I think we'll end up tagging this level to complete that divergence on the 60 minute chart, complete the divergence on the MACD in the daily time frame there. And we could see a reversal off of this level before the month ends zoom out you can see the trend line and again the red one excluded the shadow from 2000 the black one it, sorry I had to shut off the mic there for a second I had a cough uh, the black one includes the shadow from 2000 and again we're just below that level right now we may overthrow it go to 6100 but we can also turn off of it here in this mid 6000 area or so we're directly below it right now as you just saw Again, we've had this big rally. This is the monthly time frame. Still, we've had this big rally up uh, around 5% for the month. By the end of the month, we could give all of this back, but still go higher before that happens to complete the diversions on the 60-minute chart and the target levels I've been talking about. One of them is this trend line. One of the target levels is this trend line in the weekly time frame from these two previous highs. Again, uh, if we... Uh, rally up again we could overthrow trend line in the monthly time frame and move towards 6100 and try to move towards this trend line right here uh, directly overhead you can see a divergence is developing and again these divergences have created uh, major sell offs for the S&P 500 this one will likely complete a reversal in the trend line in the monthly time frame important trend line I am watching if I put it on the chart here with the channel uh, you can see the blue line, which again, um, from this low to this low, if we draw a parallel channel from this high to this high, uh, it's directly overhead. I told you to be watching this trend line right here. And again, I expect you to move back towards it. We can even overthrow it. And if we do, we can move towards that monthly trend line. And that would take us towards this blue trend line, which is parallel to the lower boundary. And again, the uh, rising wedge upper boundary again directly overhead so we might reach the 6100 area just inched above 6000 and retreated off of it we'll be watching to see push back above it and move towards these levels and that monthly uh, trend line and uh, again I expect that uh, divergences will likely complete once this has happened MACD doing exactly what it did over here at the 2022 top it rolled over turned back up rolled over turned back up and again we're getting a lot of that here but again it is still forming a divergence these are the target levels i'm watching i still expect the s p is going to form that divergence on the 60 minute chart and move to these target levels and make a new all-time high calling for all-time highs with the sell-off with the July uh, sell-off even with the August sell-off I told you we we're still gonna move to new all-time highs because NASDAQ was gonna go back and fill the gap at 20,400 but if it moved above that gap fill it can make a new all-time high and go above the July high and slam back into its trend line I've talked about that at great length and detail uh, it ended up doing that the July peak would hold I told you what would happen if it didn't and uh, again we're getting that scenario where it is going back and slamming up into those trend lines in the weekly and the monthly time frame again this larger rising wedge forming the diversion still very much in play I think that we're going to uh, reach these levels very soon maybe we do it this week uh, with the CPI or, or Powell maybe we do it next week with Nvidia we'll be watching but I do think uh, that again target levels will be reached I think that we will continue to make new all-time highs and I'm looking for a top to complete I'm looking for a top a lot of people don't hear again I'm looking for new all-time highs and I'm looking for a top then I'm looking for a reversal I've been calling for new all-time highs for months now because when we peaked in July I told you Nasdaq would eventually go back and fill that gap take the S&P to a new all-time high well it ended up taking Nasdaq to a new all-time high uh, just slightly above the previous peak
I told you I was looking for a divergence to form on the awesome oscillator. It's doing that. It had uh, down with the triangle back to the 50 period, but then it did turn back up. So again, I was looking for this divergence. It is now carving out. We're getting the same thing on the MACD. So we'll see. Do we get a bigger sell off? Uh, Stochastic's trying to roll over here. So do we sell off at the CPI, but then try to still rally? with uh, wholesale inflation or Powell, or do we just get the rally and stochastic just goes flatline here? We'll be watching, but I do expect when the sell-off is done, and maybe it completed today, maybe it has a little bit more to go, I do think we'll rally up towards the mid uh, 6,000, maybe as high as going uh, on into the 6,100 area. So again, for that topping process to complete, but still expecting new all-time highs in all likelihood. P daily here. Okay, for the NASDAQ, again, I told you that I thought I uh, we would get uh, green bars re-showing up here. Uh, and we bounced out the 50, and then we got the presidential election results, and uh, the market turned back up. I told you NASDAQ got a higher low, S&P got a lower low. They diverged right here. So, again, expected a rebound off of these 50 periods. Likely see new highs. Presidential rally with the Fed. Thinking about that great length and detail before it happened. The pullback that I told you about, it may not be done yet, but again, that could also still go towards its monthly trend line. Uh, it's just directly underneath it, just uh, just fraction. And again, we're hovering at that trend line weekly time frame. NASDAQ has come to just, just uh, to that trend line there, and maybe we overthrow it. Uh, I've included the shadow here, and this is a parallel uh, channel from the pandemic low in 2020 to the 2021 peak and you can see we're forming a divergence very similar to the 2021 top the bullish divergence at the 2022 bottom MACD is forming a divergence with the July peak divergences have given us pullbacks uh, just as we had back over here uh, but this larger divergence that's developing more recent price action and near resistance levels will likely produce a reversal again we'll be watching if we do start to see the sell-off or overthrow this area and start to see the sell-off we'll be looking to see if we take out the 20 we bounced off of it previously here here and here violating it and then bouncing off of it and then this trend line uh, will have to be taken out this trend line we're seeing an exodus from tech this is the uh, four-week moving average of uh, tech fund uh, flows we've just seen the largest four week outflows in history talked about how Jeff Bezos he's a good sign of what's going on guy is aggressively selling Amazon stock but he's just doing it to fund his other projects poppycock he's doing it because he knows that the bull market is coming to an end Amazon stock is at nosebleed levels actually it's gonna crash like it did at the 2000 top where it crashed by 90%. I don't know that it crashes that much in ex-bear market, but again, Jeff Bezos aggressively selling his Amazon stock. Seeing the largest outflows four-week average in tech in history. Been bigger than the bursting of the tech bubble. Just going back to the weekly chart of NASDAQ, again, we've gone slightly above this peak right here. I told you if we did, we would slam right into these trend lines, hopefully in the weekly time frame. We're pushing up in here. We have a rising wedge that's forming in the daily time frame. I don't know that we get uh, above this level. Again, we may uh, get higher to that monthly trend line and overthrow this level a little bit. Just here, directly underneath this trend line right now, a bit below the trend line in the monthly time frame. The rising wedge that's forming, you can see it in the daily time frame. It's near that upper channel line in the weekly time frame. Now, if we get above these levels and sometimes uh, rising wedges, you get overthrows. If we overthrow this level, again, that trend line in the monthly time frame uh, could be tagged. We're just, uh, just a little bit underneath it. At this trend line right here, again, I've drawn it from this peak here and this peak here. We've come up to it and we've stalled. Uh, the rising wedge is from the August low here with these peaks right here. So there you have it. We had a rising wedge previously and again, uh, that pattern expanded. We had a breakdown of this trend line. And again, I told you we had key support. There was no confirmation, no follow through to the break of that trend line. Uh, and again, the trend lines can change. Longer term trend lines in the monthly time frame are not going to change.
are likely going to be resistance levels because there's so many years involved with those trend lines. Here again, we expanded uh, the boundary here just a little bit. And rather than this trend line right here, I've taken it back from here and we stalled right there at that trend line, at least so far. We'll see if we get above this level. Do we pull back a little bit more inflation data and fill, try to fill the gap or go to gap support on NASDAQ? We'll be watching. Again, um, sometimes NASDAQ and S&P, they diverge at tops. Uh, they diverge at this bottom right here. They diverged at the top over here in July. They diverge. Will that happen here? Uh, we'll see. But we are at some trend lines of resistance here in the daily and the weekly time frame. And if we get above them and overthrow the rising wedge here, then you have that monthly trend line just directly above, uh, just a little bit higher. We had the diversions form here that gave us a sell off back to the 50. Could be we get a brand new divergence right here uh, on the RSI in the daily time frame. I am looking for a divergence or a confirmation of a lower high on the uh, 60 minute chart. Be watching for the next MACD rollover here in the daily time frame. Let's look at the 60 minute chart. Going way back, I told you again, uh, we could see a divergence or confirmation of a lower high, but going way back over here again, the divergence back in uh, July, I told you we could see something like that happen right here, where again, we reach an extreme, we push down, but then we turn back up. And again, it may not be done yet. Uh, we'll see what happens. But if we can rally back up with the CPI, uh, you could see that happen immediately if we have to sell off a little bit further. But we'll be watching. Do we get the rally with the CPI or do we sell off a little bit further with it? But or and maybe try to rally with Powell. Do you expect this uh, will confirm a, a, a lower high or a divergence with the RSI one or the other? I marked it as a divergence here. Again, I marked these a couple of days ago with the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. But it is playing out. We're seeing the RSI drop. We're seeing price drop. The NASDAQ 100 was down. It was down almost 36 points, 0.17% a day. It was down at even lower levels, but we didn't close there here on the 60-minute chart. But versions forms immediately with the uh, PI data. Then I'll be watching. Does the MACD turn back up? Do we see the RSI turn back up? But it is playing out as I marked here. That's why I told you I was expecting a sell-off. Maybe it's done. Maybe it's not. Regardless, some people will move to a new high. And then we'll see, does NASDAQ diverge with it or does it go a little bit higher and slam into the monthly trend line? We're at that uh, boundary on the daily and slightly below the one on the weekly. But uh, move above that, hit the monthly trend line on the NASDAQ. So again, we'll be watching. Uh, do we sell off further? Then rebound, get a rebound immediately. Pay attention. Do, does NASDAQ and S&P diverge again? Remember, on the 60-minute chart, S&P moved to a new low. S uh, NASDAQ got a higher low. They often diverge. And we saw the same thing at the July peak it over and over again. So we'll be watching. Does that happen this time? It doesn't have to, but oftentimes it does. So again, um, versions forms. Then we'll be looking for the rally to continue.